What is going on, Wolfpack? Savage here. Today, we're going to be spectating some random players. I'm going to hold off on the viewer submitted gameplay for a few days, and we're going to be spectating some random players, and I have some other content that's going to be new to the channel coming later this week, so stay tuned for that. But the premise behind this video is going to be spectating some randoms and seeing, well, how they play. It could be good. It could be bad. We don't know. Um, but if you guys have ever spectated some random players, you know that the possibilities are endless. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Join the Wolfpack today. Also, leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes and as always join our discord community if you guys are looking for players to play with the discord community is at 4,000 strong and is growing so there are a lot of players there it's become almost the hub of call of duty looking for group pages so keep utilizing that guys keep finding other players to play with and let's keep the wolf pack strong but guys without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay all right so here we are spectating me i killed myself intentionally as you can see there's only 144 enemies left um i love to go to the gulag just to ruin their day and so that my kd won't be tanked that bad from killing myself twice but anyway here we are uh as you can see i'm gonna splat but the purpose of this series is to put you guys in the enemy's position the whole thing from strategy and the whole way that i get my mindset is assuming how players are going to play now granted sometimes you cannot predict how players are going to play but if you guys can spectate the enemies and kind of get in the habit of putting your mindset well this is typically how players play it'll make your decision making process a lot easier but here we are spectating sea tiger he hears footsteps um he's got the shotgun this shotgun as you guys know is an absolute unit it's not the firebrush shotgun but that's fine the guys the enemy that was here is clearly broke through the window so he's clearly no longer in here he's outside i would imagine right in this position you need to play aggressive right i understand wanting to sit in a corner with a shotgun and wait for the enemy to come to you and that's fine but after a few seconds i think the wait is a little too long and then you give the enemy the the advantage as far as either A, getting away and avoiding his death, or B, he will have ample amount of time to come up with an outplay um, and then shut down our throats. So you guys want to get these fights won fast. I always say that. I know I'm a broken record. But guys, you have got to speed up your gameplay. You don't want to sit in here doing this. We know there's an enemy near us, and still we're sitting in a window, looking side to side, um, just kind of... You know what I see in this? I see lack of confidence is what I see in this. You guys need to start getting a little confidence and going out there because if you die, guess what? You get to respawn and do it again. Your gameplay will not improve. Your gameplay will not get better if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Start getting a little more aggressive. Start practicing your gunfight. Start practicing your gameplay. So far, we went from 144 people down to 94 and we literally, all we did was hear an enemy break a window and some footsteps and that was it. We've, we've got no practice. So here we are wasting five minutes of our lives not improving. So he's got the he's got the recon flag and I love the recon flag. I'm going to actually be releasing a video hopefully this week, maybe early next week on how to do the recon strat. I'm a huge believer in the recon strat. Um there's plenty of content creators that do it. This is a great way to get a lot more wins than you guys are already securing. That's the beauty about this game too is there's so many varieties of different ways to play the game, so many strategies you could use. As I was saying in yesterday's video, you guys don't want to take everything that I say or everything that another YouTuber says um, and then embed it into your head. You guys want to look at this content with an open mind. You don't have to agree with me with everything. This is all, again, scenario-based. It's all strategy-based. If you have a different strategy, your strategy may not line up with mine. So, again, take it with an open mind. Kind of improve it things you think you... Okay, yeah, Savage is kind of right. Improve it those things and combine it with the strategy you're already doing. Not everybody is built for a run and gun chasing down bounties mentality. Not everybody is built for a get a recon flag and sit up and wait for the next recon flag mentality. Not everyone's built for UAV hunting down mentality. Not everybody is built for driving around a big Bertha and hopping out on people. People have different wants. People have different needs. People have different reaction times than others. So you have to base your gameplay on your reaction time, on your skill, and then grow all of them together. You guys can't just come out and be like, I'm going to drop this badass strategy and I'm instantly going to be better at this game. Well, no, you've got to get some better aim as well. And guess how you get better aim? Shooting enemies. That's why I always tell you guys to load up and practice against bots because a lot of people when they enter the war zone, they're like, oh shit, I don't want to die. And it just hits them like a wall, dude. And they just freeze up just like this. Here we have a level two threat and I wouldn't be frozen up right now. If this was another area and you weren't really in a condensed area, fine. Freeze up, wait for them to come for you. That's fine. But you're in quarry, fam. There are multiple footsteps here. We got one easy kill, which is awesome. There's another one. I don't know what the hell lobby you're in right now. I would love to have a hand in this one. And, other, and then we still have another bounty, right? And he's relatively close because he's level two. Those of you who are new to this game might not know this, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. 
the bounty system has three levels level one he's pretty far away level two he's relatively close you're within you know sniping range or getting beamed at distance with an ar level three he's right up your ass and it's time to kick it into high gear now a lot of players freeze up in this moment and they sit here and wait for the bounty to come for them and that's fine again different gameplay different strategies for different players i'm fine with that but you have this amazing building you could actually work right so if you hear his footsteps under you, you could jump out of the window, you could jump out of the door, you could jump out of the opening in the side, and you could rotate out from behind him and under him, and then come up and surprise him. Okay, in this point here, he's a level three. If he's not picked up on a heartbeat sensor, he's got ghost on fam. We're down to 64 enemies, 63 enemies, and we only have two kills. Again, the point is to get into more fights, practice your gunplay, and practice your movements. You guys don't want to just get good gunplay. You guys don't want to just get good strategy. You need to utilize movements. I think that movement is one of the most underappreciated um, aspects of this battle royale in particular. You know, other battle royales, movement wasn't really that that necessary. It all came down to strategy and, and angles and um, just having a good shot. But this game right here is extremely, extremely intense when it comes to movement. Now, why I froze this video here is because he had the he had the guys armor just busted to hell and he's got his loadout drop right so he should feel a hundred percent confident with this fight yes his armor is almost broken right it's a sliver so technically it's basically broken but he's got his armor broken at this point yes he's got to pop a reload but what's his secondary if he's got an smg and ar he needs to push them and capitalize on this moment especially since you have the high ground the enemy just jumped off He's gonna have to wrap around to get in a doorway or go under you to get in a doorway. And guess what? You know he's not running in the open, so you know where he's gonna run to. So at this point, I would jump off and chase him or at least at first look over the edge and see if I can get a clean shot on him. Granted, because you're on the edge of the building, he's probably already gonna be wrapped by the time you make it to that angle. But regardless, you wanna go ahead and capitalize on this moment of his armor being broken, as you can see, um, and getting the kill. So he pops the reload, closes the doors. <laughs> And here we are again in this rinse and repeat thing of holding the staircase. Now, again, this isn't a bad strategy. Right? I hate saying strategy when it comes to camping, but it's, it, 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 it works, right? It works. I hate it. Don't agree with it, but it works. But again, when you're sitting here waiting for an enemy to, enemy to come to you um, and you're just sitting here ADS, how are you improving as a player? The fact that people play like this is fine, but the fact that people play like this and want to get better at this game is mind blowing to me. Oh, weird. He used concussions. How do you contest campers? uh concussions and then he gets absolutely annihilated i'm not surprised in that aspect at all like i keep telling you guys in every video more and more players are using concussions weird so desire use concussion against our dude and put him in an impossible situation absolutely impossible and again i would have utilized the fact that i was on the higher ground to my advantage and try to jump on the enemy and get some shots off and also the fact that we already had desire's armor broken i would utilize that to my advantage as well but we did pop dead silence not really sure why maybe a misclick I don't know, uh, but we do have, and he, and of course he did pick up our dude's weapons. Um, so he, he didn't have his loadout drop yet. He has a scavenger bounty activated. He's got $14,000 he's sitting on and there's a loadout drop over to the north. Now, the first thing I'll do is go to the buy station and grab a UAV first and foremost, right? You want to make sure this area is somewhat clear. I can't say hundred percent clear because people utilize ghost, but you at least want to get that mindset like, okay, it's not that hot, right? So uh, definitely go ahead and buy a UAV before you start getting these other things because the last thing you want to happen is be sitting on $16,000, have the money for the UAV or even advanced UAV or the self-res or whatever you want to get. Uh, and then there's a camper sitting behind this box and he shoots you in the head, right? Or there's a camper sitting by the loadout and he shoots you in the head. You don't want to fall into that trap. So go ahead, if you're next to a buy station, you have the extra money, buy the UAV if you're in a clustered area, find out if anybody's near you and give you that peace of mind that kind of lets you go out there Take a deep breath, relax, be aware of people with ghosts on, of course, but you know it's not that hot in this area. All right, so we have a scavenger activated, but still we're just kind of ghetto looting. We're just looting things we don't need. We have $18,000. We had we had an armor box and we have dead silence and he pops dead silence for the second time in a row. This is the second time in 60 seconds. He's picked up a dead silence and instantly popped it. Guys, don't waste your deady. We need to get UAVs, we need to get self reses. We have so much money. What do you think he's going to feel like when he gets shit on and loses $22,000? He's going to feel like shit. He's like, damn, I wasted 10 minutes looting just to die. And I gave the enemy my money and still passing at the buy station to go to the loadout drop. Now, 
the bait the location of the loadout drop is right in this little divot right right behind the wall right by um whatever this is i'm not sure what this is i'm gonna be honest um but you have this big ass building back here with multiple windows that people like to sit in and camp and your loadout's here so if there's another enemy nearby their loadout's probably going to be there too and they're going to see that your loadout's there and there's a huge probability there's gonna be someone waiting on the rooftop of one of these buildings of the many buildings that are here waiting on the hilltop right over here and also waiting in the windows of the buildings so why not get a uav i'm so against the fact that he's refusing to buy before he pushes. I really am, especially in solos. Now we're already down to 39 enemies left. Okay, fortunately for you, there's no other loadout here, but again, there could be enemy players. Also, I've never been a fan of laying prone to grab your loot loadout. Now, if you're being shot at and you need to go prone to save yourself, that's fine, but I've never been a fan of people going prone. Well, ever, honestly but especially the loadout drop because of baiting. You wanna to go to loadout, select your loadout, buy it and dip. Literally should only take half a second. To get really good at it. Maybe a second at best, right? Um, I'm guessing his mom's yelling at him to come eat dinner right now. Hold up chat. We'll wait. We will wait, brother. All right, sick. And this is exactly, and this kind of gameplay is exactly why I started making this series. I said to myself, you know what? I'm laughing at these guys and I'm trolling them, but when I first started playing Battle Royale back in H1Z1, back in PUBG, I did the same shit, honestly. Oh, there's a guy right in front of him to his left, using the Car 98 to miss his shots. Now, well, we have a lot of things to discuss in this fight, brothers. A lot of things to discuss in this fight. All right, let's go ahead and discuss them while they're on my mind. So, he uses his Car 98 to try to get the headshot, misses pretty bad, but again, I'm not gonna troll anyone's aim. We're all trying to get better, that's fine. One thing that I did notice, He's using a Car 98, which is a marksman, which is a, you know, in a lot of people's heads, a sniper rifle, but you don't want to use a fully built long range AR and a sniper rifle. If I do rock an AR with my sniper, it's going to have somewhat of uh, an SMG build to it. No stock, things like that, right? You never want to limit yourself to not being able to fight close range. If this enemy is somewhat decent, he's going to shit on our face because he might have a close range weapon and we won't. The last thing I want to do is take a VLK into a close quarter situation, especially in buildings, and just put yourself out in the open and get blitzed down by a, the shotgun meta, right? By the MP5, by the MP7. You can name a variety of weapons that'll sh outshoot this gun any day of the week in a close range setting. Secondly, he panicked through a grenade. There's no reason to waste your grenades. Don't just throw them because you see the enemy. Um, thirdly, let's rewind. Now let's watch this gunfight. Let's notice what he does with his AR. And we talk about this all the time with players shooting before their crosshair is lined up with the enemy. When it comes to shooting the enemy, it's patience, waiting for that headshot. Now, the better you get, the more efficient you get, the faster your shot will become. But if you're just getting out and you're just now getting started with shooters and you're trying to practice, you need to be patient with your shots. You need to take some time to get that perfect headshot, especially the Car 98. Same thing with ARs. Get some time to learn the lead and get that perfect lead on them. Just because you see Nick Merckx or myself or Iceman Isaac or Expel sitting here whipping shots and getting quick kills doesn't mean it's for everybody. We've been playing games for a very long time to get to that skill level. You guys need to take some time. Don't worry the fact that you can't instantly flick on targets. Take some time, learn the lead, learn the shots, line up the crosshair, get the headshot and blitz down the enemy. But this is the point I wanted to make. He misses the shot. And then again, with the same thing with the panic, throwing the grenade, watch what he does with his AR. Watch when he starts shooting. What are, what are we shooting at? We're not shooting at anything. There's nothing, there's nothing on the screen. There's physically nobody on the screen. And again, I'm not trolling him. I'm just trying to be a little bit more dramatic to stress the fact that you guys need to take your time. Line up the crosshair. You don't shoot until the enemy is on this dot, period. You never want to shoot before your crosshair is lined up. You waste ammo. You give the enemy extra time to shoot you first and foremost and or get safe like Joe Blow did. Um, but here we are now. The enemy has clearly run into the building um, to, of course, camp. This is probably one of the worst buildings to push. Oh, now we buy. Now we buy. Okay. This is probably one of the worst buildings to push, in my opinion. I absolutely hate. Did he just buy a loadout, fam? What? If you're sitting on a bunch of money in the middle of a fight and you already have your loadout, you do not want to buy another loadout. There's no reason for it. Now, I know his mindset. I know exactly what he was thinking. Well, I want to get my ghost class so you can't tell where I'm at. But I guarantee you that that guy in that building 
didn't have a UAV up and he probably didn't have one in general. He already knows you're here. So you having ghosts isn't gonna change anything. Now let's watch this back. He comes in here and he puts himself in a corner knowing there's an enemy here. We know there's an enemy next to us. We assume he's gonna camp, but guess what? He decided I'm not camping, he came out to shoot us. And then he executes. Now something that was really confusing to me was this, the airstrike. You guys need to be more confident in your own shots and your own abilities and stop wasting your kill streak. Stop it. There's a guy camping on a roof, use it. There's a guy hiding behind cover, use it. If you need to get better position, use it. But dudes, you got clear line of sight on the enemy. Do not waste your kill streak because you feel like you're not a good enough player to get the kill. I'm doing this a lot. I know. I don't know why. So here we are, 30, 32 enemies now, or 31, 30 total. And we're spectating. Hey, we're spectating Kenneth, who's rocking nine kills, getting shot at. It's actually, I believe, a different player. All right, so great use of going prone, utilizing the ridge to his advantage. But we need to be careful. I see he's getting a little antsy. The last thing we're gonna do is push the enemy in this position with 30 HP. He's already got nine kills. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He's probably gonna play safe. In this situation, what you want to do is played up. You wanna back up, played up a little bit and get ready for the weapon change, right? Because he's probably, this guy here might push you. He might decide, you know what? You're probably plating up too. I'm gonna push him come from the hard right flank and get the shots off and catch you while you're plating. You need to be very careful when you're plating up. I don't like the corner we're sitting in at all. I like the fact that you played it up and luckily he didn't push you and now we're rocking dead silence. Not really sure the point of dead silence if we're not gonna push him. Since we have dead silence, whip out your MP5 that we know you have and push the dumpster. The guy's sitting behind it, clearly he will have no idea you're going to him. Um, but he's bailing out. He might jump on this roof and get the high ground. Okay, this is also a great play as well. You know, you don't want to fight them on the same level playing field. You want to get the advantage. Height will most of the time be the advantage. And here we are in a nice spot. I like that he's trading shots with the enemy. He's making the enemy waste his plates, theoretically. All right, enemies tossed the nade at us and we're damaged. I hope he doesn't drop off. All right, so we're damaged and we dropped off. Now, this is the issue I was talking about earlier. Now we're in a situation where it's flipped again. The other guy's probably full plated because we were just peppering him barely. So he probably has more plates than us. And we are at a disadvantage because he got the nade hit on us and we are more damaged than he is, I would assume. So at this point, you need to be careful putting yourself in this situation and plating up. I would crouch on the rooftop, plate up, kind of stand up, peek, crouch, stand up, peek, crouch while I'm popping my plates and then shoot at the enemy. Now what you're doing is putting yourself in a position where the enemy's concussing. He's probably going to wrap around and catch you plating. I'm not surprised it happened at all in that fight, honestly. Um, I understand his mindset really wasn't a wasn't a terrible decision, but at the same time it was. You got to assume the, the enemy's waiting for that opportunity to push you to where you're more damaged than he is. And that's exactly what happened, and he paid the ultimate price. So here we are spectating Blackout rocking three kills and buying UAVs. Thank you, Blackout. He's going to be sitting on some some really good money, right? Buys UAV and an, a precision strike, and that's fine. There's an enemy coming back in from the gulag behind him, I would assume. So um, in this position here, you could just camp the body. I love this. I love this. Players, nine times out of ten, will go back for their loot if they can. And it might be just be a random guy, actually. It might just be a random guy. I think that's exactly what it is. I got a little gung-ho, got a little excited right there. I don't think he's paying attention to the minimap at all. He saw a bleep, and then he stopped paying attention to it. Guys, if you see a bleep on the minimap, even if you don't want to listen to me and pay attention to your minimap, if you see a bleep, just keep tracking it until it goes away. Did he buy a loadout drop too? I Man, it's fine. You got the money for it. Here we are getting the loadout. I'm assuming uh, our ghost class, um, maybe some restock, depending on his gameplay. Let's see what he picks up. Picks up the LMG with... He's rocking ghost. All right. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of EOD. There's a, I'd rather double time just for movement purposes. That's a, that's a personal choice i decided to live by that you guys want to take my i think he thinks that i'm the enemy that or he thinks it's a really sick ass spray <laughs> i love this a lot of times that i spectate players they think that i'm the guy they just killed which is fine didn't hurt my feelings but it's just funny watching how they react when they think that i'm the guy they just shit on all right but for a guy teabagging with three kills and 23 enemies left this is not the place that i want to do you need to play with some confidence teabag boy so here we are wasting time the player count just dipping again this game is a lot of strategy a lot of gunplay it's a lot of movement it's a lot of know-how it's a lot of tactics which is strategy i guess times two right and it's also time management i cannot stress that enough to you guys if you guys are trying to get that 10 kill that 20 kill that 30 kill no matter what skill level you're at 
you need to utilize your time wisely. There's still an opportunity to drop another seven kills with 20 left. This is a big ass circle. People won't be dying off that quickly. You could actually hunt down some bounties. You could hunt down some players. There's a vehicle parked up to your right. You could chase him down. There's so many things you can do in this situation to increase your kill count. So I would love to see Blackout finish with 10 kills. Uh, I'm not really that confident that's going to happen. But as you see on the mini map, your boy who was in the vehicle is clearly in the house right now shooting at somebody else. So this is a perfect opportunity to go third party him. And here we are just leaving. Leaving. You know, maybe he didn't spot the guy inside the house that was shooting and drove up to it. Maybe by some odd thing on earth, he didn't go over there. We And we showed some gameplay the other day where a viewer submitted to us a match where he didn't get a bounty one time. He didn't get UAV. He just kept chasing down people that were showing themselves on the map. People that were driving around, people that were shooting unsuppressed, people that were flying in. He literally just hunted down person from person from person, dropped 17 kills and didn't call in a single UAV and didn't go for a bounty. And I actually love the fact that he showed us that because I want to go ahead and stress the point of how important it is for UAVs and for, um, you <laughs> get wrecked, brother. You need to shoot. This is a PKM, bro. You guys didn't know the PKM is an absolute laser if it's built correctly. This one's not built correctly. But the PKM is an absolute unit. You can spray that gun. You can hold the trigger down, spray it, and get a nice easy kill. Oh, but hey, we were able to steal the sniper's kill. So now we've alerted the sniper to our location. Hopefully he does not start shooting at the Big Bertha. That'd be a waste. All right, so we have another vehicle coming up behind us. And instead of popping out and shooting it, when you see those buggies coming at you, you need to shoot them. They're really easy to shoot the driver out of. Real easy. Doesn't matter what gun it is. AR, LMG, sniper rifle, I will get them knocked nine times out of 10. Um, not to mention, you have those boxes right next to the vehicle. You can utilize this cover so he can't run you over. You're just missing out on a lot of kills right now. A lot of kills. And maybe, you know, I don't think it's not the fact that he's not paying attention to the map. I think it's due to the fact that he just, he's too scared to, to push these enemies. The circle is not favoring our side of the street. And again, I always base circle rotations on open areas, right? Because this is an open area right here. If you look on the mini map, um, we are not favored. The small sliver of the circle is on our side, which means we will have to push across the open eventually. So you need to be very aware of that and make your decision-making process based on the fact of, do I really want to cross in the open when I'm forced to, or do I want to go ahead and do it now when there's not that many people in this area um, and people are still pretty spread out because the circle hasn't clustered them in? Um, and just make your decision on that. But because he's playing so passive, he should wait for the gas to hug his back and push in with the gas. And I normally would not tell you to do play that way, but because of the position we're in. We have this little ridge right in front of us, right below us, that we could utilize to get some kills or to be safe. If I was in this position, which I promise you I wouldn't be, I would not, I would not sit here and wait for the gas to come to my ass. I would go ahead and rotate early um, and get on the other side because eventually you're gonna have to cross in the open. Again, I'm only giving a strategy based off the way he's playing, but it's not the smartest idea. So if this guy does wanna play like this again, he's got some ridges he could use to play slow and passive and kind of bounce across. Um, but if you're trying to get more wins, if you're trying to get more kills, if you want the better strategy, you want to go ahead and push early. I really can't believe this game has been out for so long and still people are playing like this. And again, I'm not trolling guys. I know a lot of you guys watching this probably still play like this to be a hundred percent honest. And it's, it's fine. Just, just be honest with yourself. If you guys want to improve, this is not the way. Spend an entire day just stepping it up and playing aggressive. You might die and die and die and die and die over and over, but guess what? You're putting yourself in positions that I'm trying to teach, that I'm trying to throw you in, and eventually you're going to learn from some of the mistakes that you're, that you're making yourself. Eventually you will get better on how to fight 1v1s the more 1v1s you get in. It's like playing basketball. The more hoops you shoot, guess what? You're going to end up shooting a lot better than you did day one. Practice, practice, practice. Now, whether or not you want to put the time in to get really good, that's all up to you. And again, this right here is actually really stupid. So that window in this house actually has an angle on us. Um, and us laying prone puts us in a very bad position to get sniped. Not to mention, we hear the sniper shooting. I'm assuming a big Bertha. And we're just sitting out here, the, just, just waving. Hi, what's going on, guys? My name is Blackout, and I like to get shot in the head. This is probably some of the most passive gameplay we've ever spectated, guys. I apologize. 
He lays prone. Oh my god, he laid prone. Do not... I repeat, do not ever lay prone. And there's a sniper looking right at us. We slid right into him. All right, like I was saying, because of the ridge we had, and this is exactly the strategy I said he was probably going to do, and it's exactly what he did. Um, he's going to hug this ridge. He'll wait for the circle to push him out. And now he's in a position where he's got a decent position, right? He shouldn't lose this fight, but his main struggle is going to be pushing across the street. And another reason why I always tell you guys to rotate early when it's end game is because when the circle gets smaller, these eight players, they're closer together. So it would have been way easier for us to rotate when the circle is bigger because the players are spread out. But now that it's closer, now that the players are more condensed, you run the risk of getting spotted and shot way easier. All right, we're in a position I'm going to be plating up. Now you need to be aware of what's going on around you. We know that there's a guy shooting to his right in the house based on this right here, right? We know there's a guy here. He has an angle. If this guy was to look at us, he will have an angle through that window. So we got to be very careful. We need to win this fight faster. You don't want to panic shoot. You want to play it smart, but you need to play it fast because homeboy to our right could really screw us up. Don't jump off and leave the high ground. Oh my God. This is where he messes up, boys. Oh, is anyone going to shoot this kid? <laughs> he shouldn't have won that fight. He really shouldn't have. Oh my God. All right, now it's cute that he wants to grab everything, but he doesn't need anything. He had ammo, he had a gas mask, he had a self res, he had a kill streak, and he had an armor box. There was nothing he needed, so he put himself out in the open um, for no reason at all. So this is the part I was talking about. So the last thing you want to do is rotate too late and for let the gas force you out, and this is exactly what he's going to do. I have a feeling he's going to die. Granted, we've seen the server. I already know what the comments is going to say. This guy was in a bot lobby. I can already see it, chat. No one cares. The fact of the matter is, this guy's going to have a very hard time crossing the open, regardless of it being a bot lobby. And even if he survives, I still stand by exactly what I'm saying. If you guys are in a decent ass lobby, a 0.5 or above, this is not going to work out in your favor. He does have a nice lip and a nice group of rocks right here. All right. Now, this is exactly this is exactly what we we'll avoid. There are shots going on. There are only four enemies left and we have a wide open ending, right? There's only two houses, but the rest of it's open. So you're going to have one guy sit in one house. You're going to have another guy sit in another house. But you have a good angle on this window and these windows as well. Not to mention, if there's somebody out here, you'll have a good shot of them as well. But you're going to miss out on the opportunity to not only get the kill, but also miss out on the opportunity to see where these enemies are rotating to. So what I would do in this position is I would not go prone. I would sit up, peek the rock. You want to just hard peek. You want to kind of glance up, go back down, glance up, go back down. And, and kind of see what's going on. That way you can kind of ping enemies in your head where they're at. We know there's a guy in this building, duh. There's another guy near him that he's shooting at. We don't know exactly where. But you definitely want to take this time to gather intel, gather information, because now we're going to have to push out in the open, only knowing where one guy is. Um, and we have 20 seconds to figure out the rest. Happy hour has just started, boys. <laughs> you drink up. All right, there's another guy over there. Now, moments like this is where decision making is crucial. I would not have shot at this guy. If I was this dude, if I was in this guy's position, I would not have shot at him because of where the circle is, what's going to happen and who's favored homeboy in the house next to you. You just gave away your position, brother. Even if you win this fight, you might not Looks like homeboy's got a sniper on his back. But even if blackout wins this fight, he's got that window to worry about. And not to mention, I still think there's a guy in the house to the left. Why do I think that? Because there's only two houses in the circle and people love camping in houses, right? Process of elimination. So I would not have revealed my position. I would have pushed towards the house and then maybe shot him if I can get an angle on this wall and get some shots off. But now you're gonna have to run out in the open with the window looking dead at you. And it's gonna be a real bad fight for you, brother. Granted, I know the lobby we're in, I get it. I get it, chat. Please be easy on him in the comments. But again, he shouldn't win this fight. There's no reason for him to be sitting in the middle of the open, spamming his gun, um, taking so long to get the kill, and no one's shooting at him. This is absolutely crazy lobby right here. Don't do that. There's no reason for that. I will say great utilization by him. Um, hit firing instead of ADSing. A lot of people when they're using the MP5, they don't take advantage of the hit fire. Hit fire is nasty. It's nasty. So utilize your hit fire in a close quarter situation. If Somehow this guy has been blessed by the by the war zone gods. This guy has been blessed. He should have died 30 times over.
But you know what? Good on Blackout for surviving. There's two enemies left. We know there's a guy over here. I don't know why we're still staring this way. You need to be staring at your back end, right? Or you need to be wrapped around this corner to get an angle on this. Even if you're popping a reload, you need to keep your eyes on what's going on because there's probably players moving and revolving and rotating out here. And you want to get eyes on it and just see what the hell's going on. So when you do peek, you can have some kind of idea of where they're at. So we're allowing these enemies to get better position and out rotate us when we really shouldn't. These guys should both be dead. I will say the only thing he has going for him is the fact he has a beautiful ridge right in front of him. He has a beautiful ridge. <sighs> you run a huge risk. This ridge, this ridge is to your advantage for sure. But if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it, and they're gonna push over and shoot shoot on and shoot down on you from well, technically the high ground, right? And you're gonna be laying prone with your thumb up your butt, wondering why, how he's a hacker, and probably report him, right? This is just not a good play. You want to get visual at end game to see where the enemies are rotating to. It's a wide open. This is, this is bugging. I keep pausing the video, guys. This is bugging me. It's going to be a long video, I'm sure. I'm not, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not even saying anything. All right, here we are on a 1v1 with Sick Mo Bamba. And he's in the gas, utilizing his gas mask to his advantage. However, unfortunately for him, he's one tapped and laying in the gas, taking gas damage as well. Now, the enemy is on the other side of the house and or now on the inside of the house. Now saying that is it gives you a little bit of time to make your way to the fence and get safe and pop your plates, right? Or pop your plate. Winning this situation is gonna be very hard for Bamba no matter what happens. I would definitely work my way to the fence and or the house and try to outshoot this enemy. Right, here we are popping our plate now i would not sit here on this side of the fence i would get to the fence pop my plate but once my plates popped i would work my way to the house and get an even fight the reason why i say that is you have this side of the fence the enemy could wrap around or you have this side of the fence the enemy could wrap around or you could even vault over and get an easy shot on us again we're at a disadvantage because the enemy probably has full plates we don't know but he probably does and he probably has extra as well we don't we have one so we need to make this count so at this point you definitely want to pop the plate and instantly push to the house and utilize your SMG or even this gun and get the kill. Also, a lot of people fall in this habit of instead of pushing to the house, they play back and they play the edge and they're scanning. Bad idea because where's your cover? If this guy wraps around from the right and goes in the gas and gets some shots on you, you're screwed. If he comes out the door, guess what? You're screwed. If he comes around the left side, guess what? You're screwed. Push to the house. Push to cover. Stop sitting in the open trying to get a wide view of everything when it doesn't work to your favor. I don't know why we're heart beating. We already know he's over there. All right, so in this situation, here we are blindly running up this hill to safety. I like the fact we're trying to get to safety, but you know what I would have done? You see this cover right here? It's a little bit out there, but I would have made my way to the cover and gate kept this dude. Granted, he could vault over the fence and get some shots off on you, but it's better than you running in the open, putting your back exposed to the enemy because he's probably going to do the same thing you're trying to avoid him doing, right? But here we are now, one plate. We have plates. We need to pop the plates. You don't want to go prone. There's a cluster of rocks in front of you. That's what you want to utilize. Pop your plates. Pop your plates. Pop your plates. This cluster strike is going all over the place. You're, okay, you're focused on the right-hand side. You're focused a lot on the right-hand side. It might work out, but you need to be peeking both sides of the rock. Transition. Transition. Keep your mobility up. Keep your movement up. Don't freeze up because what happens if he pushes your left-hand side? What happens if he concusses you when he gets close? You're dead. We're assuming he's going to be pushing over here, but we don't know. We have no idea. And now there he is pushing the wide left-hand side. And we try to drop shot, but unfortunately the ridge is not to our favor. And we die. Because we were so focused on the right-hand side of that rock, we just let him out-rotate us. We just let him. But I'm going to start putting this series out again a couple times a week because I really feel like putting you guys into newer players position and critiquing newer players, whether they get one kill, whether they get 10 kills, is gonna be a lot more beneficial to you guys than just doing viewer submitted games. Now, I've had a lot of feedback in my comment section. I do read every comment, even if I don't like every one of them, even if I don't respond to every one of them, I do get notifications on my phone in real time and I do read every single one of them. And a lot of people said, hey, Savage, you know, we like seeing these wins, we like seeing these high kill games, we like seeing the same player play till the end of the game, but Every now and then, please drop a game where someone dies off the bat or someone gets two kills and gets wrecked. That way we can see gunfights and situations and things like that. So I heard you guys, and here we are responding with it. But guys, again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to join our Discord community, that will also be in the description below. And as always, subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Let me know 
on what you learned from this video. But until next time, guys, y'all have a good one. And good luck in Warzone. Thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these two videos over here. And as always, subscribe by clicking it over there. Also, click the notification bell. But you have a good one. Until next time, keep on improving.